Dear friends, thanks for watching another Stephen Mendes video. If this is your first time here and you like what you see, be sure to subscribe and click the bell so you won't miss a thing. Now let's get right into the topic for this evening. This is the time of year when people buy something new. And I wanted to make this video so my dear musician friends around the world would have some things to consider as they go to make their December purchases. Last December I myself bought the Roland Gaia synthesizer and I'm ashamed to say that I've had it for nearly a year now and I haven't produced a lot of great videos for those persons who own the Roland Gaia synthesizer. It was on special last December and I bought it. In a previous December five years ago, I made a start on my analog modular synthesizer and it has grown as you can see. In previous Decembers, we made our December music purchases. And so I thought I would give you some pointers this afternoon based on experience. Now I have found after having disassembled keyboards and I have eight keyboards in my studio by several different manufacturers of course that the Roland products are particularly well designed in terms of the uh, IC integrated circuit components that they use. One good feature about the Roland product line is that many of the chips occur in virtually all their instruments. If you check, the same power supply will power virtually all of their keyboards. They use one power supply across the whole range. This of course means that it's easily replaceable. You can swap between the instruments. And they use this philosophy to minimize the amount of parts that are used across their product line. Moreover, the Roland IC chips are readily available and inexpensive. And you can find Roland chips for older Roland products. Many vintage Roland products, the chips are still readily available. The same is not necessarily true with Korg or Yamaha, depending on what you buy. The life cycle of Korg products is particularly short and uh, they do not continue to produce the chips for many years after the product has been discontinued. They encourage you to buy a new keyboard instead. In the case of the Yamaha products, uh, the chips may be available but the problem with the Yamaha products is that disassembling and changing parts on their circuit boards is uh, not an easy task. If you have repaired a Yamaha keyboard, you will realize that it is not as easy to repair as a Roland keyboard. So you will understand that my video is uh, designed, uh, I'm not being paid by Roland, they don't give me anything, they haven't even given me a keyboard. I'm just making an observation based on my electronics knowledge and on my perspective of dealing with these products over numerous years. But that's not really what I wanted to address this afternoon. The idea was not to get you to buy a Roland over a Yamaha or a Korg because frankly I wanted to talk about the computers. In a previous video that I made I told you about my experiences with a failed computer and what you needed to know before buying your next computer. And I think a follow-up video is in order to answer some questions that musicians have when using computers. Now, two of the things that we're going to look at this afternoon is one, storage, 
and uh, data formats. First of all, storage. I have had bad experience recently with iOmega drives. You know that iOmega backup, they're a long company involved in backing up a data. And uh, um, but you back up your data on an iOmega drive and then you put it aside for a couple years and you try to go and retrieve your data and lo and behold, uh, it just doesn't work anymore. You're, you're in real trouble. Uh, you cannot rely on these backup drives to save your precious data. Now, we have cloud storage which is getting better and better and you may be tempted to put all your data on a cloud and the cloud storage is great but once again the cloud companies are not responsible they're not likely to lose your data but in the event that they do they owe you nothing legally they owe you nothing in most cases the cloud storage is free and even if it is not if you check their terms and conditions you will realize that they guarantee absolutely nothing so what are you going to do with your precious data that you don't lose it when your computer goes bad and you have to toss it well uh, your data which you've spent so much time creating your musical ideas which, which basically represent your lifeblood people let's face it after a creative moment and you have created a master sonic masterpiece or video masterpiece or whatever creativity you have laid down uh, is, it, is, it is irreplaceable. Your life is older, you're an older person now. That moment will never be recaptured. Even if you can play it again, you may not have the same nuances, the same feel. It may not move you like it did that time. You had created a sonic masterpiece. Just like an artist creates an artistic masterpiece in a moment of passion. Dear friends, you know this. You're a musician just like me. And we want to preserve our work. That's what we want to do. We want to preserve our work. Dear friends, your only solution is to store it in multiple locations. So don't trust it to one hard drive. Don't trust it to one cloud. And whatever you do, don't trust it to an SSD hard drive. Do not rely on that for permanent storage. Okay? The flash technology is a wonderful uh, addition to the electronics world, but even the hard disk, the magnetic hard disk, even if it fails, your data can be recovered easier than when you go into storage um, in the chemical reaction that takes place in uh, your other methods of storage. So dear friends, Please, please keep your precious data in as many places as you possibly can. Put it on two or three clouds. Put it on several hard disks. Store them in different locations. That is the number one data storage strategy. But dear friends, have you considered your data format, your data type? Do not, I repeat, do not keep all your projects in the native DAW format. No matter what DAW you use, it's going to have a native storage format. And it is not possible to read the files, in most cases, from another DAW. So you have to go that extra step with your sonic masterpiece and export your multi-track DAW project in the formats that all DAWs can read. You use WAV files for the audio and you use the SMS or SMF 
or standard MIDI file for your MIDI information. If you will export your entire project as these multiple files, which of course you will keep packaged together in one directory, then you can import your multi-track sonic masterpiece into any DAW, virtually any DAW, both present or future. However, if you just save it in your DAW and uh, you find the time comes when your DAW is no longer supported on the operating system moves on and or the current version of DAW is no longer viable for you, you are sunk and uh, out to sea without a paddle. Dear friends, you don't want that to happen to you. So this is good computer strategy well, for all your media, whether if it, if it is um, other works, you want to keep them as PDF files because the PDF format is universal. You don't go with, with doc, that's word. You don't get sucked into that. Go with PDF files. Go and each of these file formats we dealt with the file formats in Roland and after that uh, message, people were messaging me about opening Roland files with some other applications. And I had to tell the people, your Roland keyboard has the feature to export your multi-track recording in the standard MIDI file format do not rely on Roland files. Even though I love Roland and Roland will probably keep their format throughout all their keyboard range, you still don't want to be stuck. What happens if you put down a masterpiece on your Roland workstation and you decide that you want to switch to Yamaha or you decide that you want to do something in the future with your work on a different product other than a Roland product that's compatible with what you had. What are you going to do then? Dear friends, I love you dearly and I tell you these things because I love you. So let us bring you now to the point of synthesizers. Synthesizers and synthesizer patches. Dear friends, I do the synthesizer patches on all the various instruments as you will see if you check out my various synthesizer patches for all the instruments that I own. Basically you hear the sound in your ears and you should be able to model it on any synthesizer. When you model a patch, when you model a sound on your Roland equipment, you have the advantage of saving that sound and recreating it with just the push of a button. This is true of Yamaha as well as Roland as well as Korg. Any modern digital musical synthesizer will allow you to save and recall your patches. But what you're actually saving and recalling is the information parameters for the particular sound engine that that particular keyboard synthesizer actually uses. So really and truly, while it may be possible to port a sound, I spoke about this in a previous video, to port a sound from say your FA06 to your um, Roland AX guitar, or possibly your Roland VR09, or some other model within the Roland family, it would be unlikely that you could port a sound from your Roland synthesizer to any Yamaha or Korg or any other brand of synthesizer. So that is the one that is the one disadvantage of the digital synthesizers. Even the software people are no better off. Because if you buy a software synthesizer, you're not going to be able to port patches from your software synthesizer to other software synthesizers or hardware synthesizers. 
That is the uniqueness of the synthesizer engine. But if you consider here behind me my analog modular synthesizer, for all the uh, hang-ups that people have about these things, their gigantic size, their incredible cost, and the difficulty of changing and recreating patches, nevertheless, you cannot instantly create a patch on that with a push of a button. There's no way you can do that. Because first of all, you have to plug it up in the correct way. Then you have to turn the knobs to the same relative positions. And there are some people who say that even then you will not get the same sound. Well, that is both true and false. But you will get a sound that is very similar. and But you can tweak it by ear as closely as you like to the original sound. So you're not completely out to sea with an analog modular synthesizer, particularly if you have developed a good ear for sound. You should be able to get back your sound with one of them. It's just not quite as easy as in the digital case where you simply push a button. But I wanted to speak to you because uh, if you're considering buying a musical product this uh, December, whether it's a hardware product or a software product, I wanted you to go in with your eyes open as to what you are actually getting for your money and the ramifications that this could have in the years to come on your musical creativity and output. Now, before I go, I want to stress, dear friends, the frustration and futility of dealing with the software musical creation over the piece of hardware. Dear friends, when you buy an instrument, well, whatever kind of uh, synthesizer instrument you buy, if it's a piece of hardware, it has a certain amount of knobs, a certain predictable behavior which you can learn. You can learn your synthesizer. And many of you have been learning the Roland FA06, which is my most popular um, particular model of synthesizer I have in my studio based on the viewers' comments and the likes and subscribers on my channel. But what I'm saying to you is you have something worthwhile. You have something worthwhile. There is worthwhile in managing it, mastering it, and being able to make it do what you want creatively and uh, musically. The same does not really exist in the software world. The software world, unlike the hardware world, is a continuously changing world. Because of the internet, because of the necessity of the operating systems to be constantly being changed to overcome the hacks, cracks, and bad people, and bugs that the uh, people actually put in their code in the first place, it means that your operating system is not a static entity. It is constantly evolving and changing, in fact, far too often. Now, because the operating system is constantly being patched and changed, the programs have to be updated as well in order that they can still work on the new, updated version of the software. So what will happen, or what can happen, is that a particular uh, synthesizer software VST or package uh, does not is not updated. Now the VST is a very specific standard of software which should be able to work in any VST player. So as long as they have followed the rules and their VST is a generic VST, then you should be op able to open it in any DAW that supports that particular version of VST. And uh, the Muse people have built something called a Muse Receptor. They're not exactly cheap, 
but you can store your software instruments in something called a Muse receptor which is more reliable than a computer and which is used by the big name artists uh, for reliability in those big stadiums where they have thousands of people and they can't afford anything to go wrong and spoil the show. Most of those big people, they certainly don't rely on laptops like the small musician does in the gig, okay? You might just be in a bar room uh, entertaining a few people with dinner and you might just have your laptop sitting on top of your computer, so on top of your keyboard uh, playing a few MIDI files or doing something. You were doing a little solo dinner entertainment and trusting that your laptop doesn't crap out while you're doing a little show. But the big guys, they can't take those kind of chances, okay? Because the tickets are more expensive, there are much more people there, they've got to make sure that the show goes on regardless. So feel free to buy a Muse receptor if you have the cash and you can check it out uh, online after the broadcast if you choose and you can run your VSTs in that. However, uh, I don't recommend the software angle at all because of this constant change. Now I have old software running on Windows 7 um, that some of which actually came up from Windows XP if you're old enough to remember Windows XP and uh, some of that software still runs on Windows 7 it doesn't run on Windows 10 at all and uh, Windows 7, they ceased to provide security updates as of January 2020. So basically you should not be online with Windows 7. If you have a stable, for a stable computer with Windows 7 running your program in your studio, whether it's just an editor for a particular keyboard or whether it's some kind of VST that you're running within some kind of DAW, there is absolutely no need whatsoever to have that computer connected to the internet. And if you only turn it on and use it for that very specific purpose, then software updating becomes a non-issue. You don't have to constantly contend with the patching or the increased versions. Is it just me or are you completely frustrated when you get to learn a product and you have it doing exactly what you want and they come along with version 14 or version 15 and now all of a sudden your interface, you have changed it for what reason I don't know, you can't find the tools you wanted, you can't um, use the same workflow you were accustomed to using, so now you have to learn the product all over again, they've taken out a couple of your favorite features, they've introduced a couple of new features which you may or may not want or like, and uh, your good version that you like that you grew to love, that did what you want, that you were productive with, no longer is a, a viable entity. Dear friends, that is what you're up against. Now that, there's nothing that interferes with your creativity and your production as a musician trying to use the tools at your disposal than to waste time endlessly twiddling, fiddling and tearing your hair out just to master a new piece of software that you don't even like. You like the previous version but unfortunately once you upgraded to the new version you can't go back to the old version. Dear friends, don't let yourself get trapped in that cycle of frustration. I hope to bring you some more videos that will unleash your creative potential. The purpose that I have here on earth, because I have technical expertise in electronics and as well as music, is to help my fellow musicians in this world as much as possible to overcome and master the technology so that they will unleash new creative potential to create whatever music they want to do. And as musicians, 
Well, there's nothing that that really interrupts our flow, nothing that really spoils our role than to have a bad experience with computer software and computers in general. Let me tell you, that can ruin your day in a hurry. So that instead of creating that song or giving rise to that sound that was in your head, you're all night long this sound and you got up and you started on your synthesizer early in the morning and then all of a sudden your computer starts to act up, crack up or just plain quit on you and now the balance of your day is spent fighting with the operating system, putting on patch after patch, hunting on Google for what to do next. Dear friends, we need deliverance. Deliverance from the, in, uh, the, 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 the string, the cords that bind us to this ever rolling cycle of constant uh, computer uh, problems. Dear friends, I said years ago, and I've been in computers, I used to run a computer, of, uh, I used to sell computers back in the early days of micros, and I used to uh, render um, consultancy services in setting up and installing these computers. Uh, oh, that was all back in the 90s. Dear friends, that was in another life. But I remember even back then when it was profitable and you could charge people for this customized, specialized consultancy. I said to myself one night I was going to bed, the human race is condemned to eternally fiddle, twiddle, tweak and freak over the computer and the sheer frustration of trying to get the computer to do what you want it to do. If you can identify with my broadcast today, dear friends, please make it realistic down in the comments below. Subscribe, ring the bell, and wait for my next video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you very soon again.